The Orlando Magic needed a get-right game, and boy, did they get one. How sticking with the process finally netted some results and why it's something they should stick with nonetheless. We'll get to that coming up on today's episode of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are indeed locked on magic. Today is March 31st, 2024. My name is Philip Ross and I'm the expert and site editor over at Orlando Magic Daily.com because you can, of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, the Orlando Magic get their get right game. They dominate the Memphis Grizzlies. How they did it doing the exact things that they have been doing over the last three games and why it finally worked. We'll get to that. Plus, say that, yes, the Magic played the Grizzlies. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. First, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Coming out of Friday's loss to the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, Paolo Beccaro, you know, put it very plainly, we talked about it in length, that he just needs to play better. Um, execution needs to be better. Late game stuff needs to be better. That was a recurring theme. But there's another theme underneath all of that. There is another, another piece of that puzzle that the Magic were saying and the Magic were getting at that was layered beneath, uh, layered beneath um, the disappointment of another close loss. Mo Wagner said it pretty clearly too that pretty clearly too on Friday night that we're playing really good basketball. Like we're defending really well. We're, we're doing a lot of the things we have to do to win. We're just coming up a player too short. The team, the team was maybe searching for some confidence, but they had every reason to believe when they watched the tape, when they felt their way through those games, that A, they had a chance to win. And then we talked yesterday, go back and listen to that if you want to, um, about how the Magic had their chances to win these games. And it was really in their hands. It was stuff they could fix. But they knew they were playing well enough to win. And that sometimes it's not about the result. Sometimes it is about the process. Well, let's be clear. The result matters as much as, you know, I can say, look, they did good things in this game. And they, and you're like, I'm a, I mentioned yesterday, I'm a positive person. I, I want to point those good things out. They need to get wins. Winning matters this time of year more than any other time. Like when I, you know, when I told you for years, good teams don't win close games, they avoid them. This is why, but also this is the time where good teams have to win close games. And so, where the magic fell short on where the magic fell short on uh over the weekend or this past week, that stuff's gonna matter. I'm not sitting here telling you that it doesn't. But the magic at least conceptually believed that what they do works. That if they stick with it, if they play their brand of basketball, if they play with the swagger and confidence that they know they have, they're going to win. The results will take care of themselves. It's about the process. It's always about the process. Process over results. It is a coachism. And in the regular season, it plays out that if you do the right things more often than not, you're going to win. And so the Magic understood that even on this three-game losing streak, even with the losses that they've taken, that they are capable of winning these games. And they are capable of competing. And so, look, we'll talk about this in a minute, but Saturday was a statement game. Saturday was a statement to say, our process works. We defend at a high level. We shut you down. We move the ball, even if we're not making shots, which the Magic weren't early. 
we will get to the basket. We will get to the foul line. We will put pressure on you in so many ways. You're not going to be able to score enough to run away from us, even if we're struggling. That's kind of been the Magic's way. And so a game like Saturday night, as Wendell Carter said, Friday's loss galvanized the team. They felt they needed to get their swagger back. They felt like they needed to go and, yes, beat down on a team that isn't as good as they are. The Clippers might be as good as they are. The Warriors might be as good as they are. The Kings might be as good as they are. The the Grizzlies are not. Sorry, Memphis. You know, check out our friends at Locked on Grizzlies. I'm sure they have a great recap of this game. Um, The Memphis Grizzlies ate on the Magic's level. And so the Magic did exactly what they're supposed to do. Even very early on in the game, it was 9-9. Memphis had seven fast break points. It was just like, in the half court, Memphis ain't going to score on this team. And the Magic had this mentality and this swagger and this, this mindset that said that. That Memphis is not going to score on us. For they, Memphis was shooting like 23% midway through the third quarter. It was a 9-9 game, and then the Magic went on a 32-4 run. Put the game completely out of reach. Um, the Magic let the lead slip, slip to 23 early in the third quarter and then put on a 21-4 to run to make this one a 40-point game. The Magic found their shot. Don't get me wrong. They found their shot. They made uh, 22 of 44 threes in the game. The, the three-pointers were there. They were, they were good looks. They missed their first three. They were all great looks. It was just like, okay, like they're going to have your way. Just get to the paint, give that support. Um, defense is going to do its job. This is magic basketball. This is who the magic are. This is what they do. And this is the process that works. This is the process that has gotten them 43 wins at this juncture of the season. This is the process that, um, this is the process that has put the magic in this spot, the fifth seed in the Eastern Conference, a one and a half game lead up on the Pacers, a, a team that has now officially clinched a top eight spot. You know, in traditional playoffs, they'd be in. We'd be celebrating a clinch playoff. We obviously got the play announced. We're not quite celebrating that quite yet. Um, but the Magic are, are in. Like, they're there. And it certainly feels like they're here to stay for a little bit. This was a game, again, we'll talk, I want to talk about this here in the next segment, but this was a game when the Magic just asserted their dominance, asserted who they are and what they're going to be about in the playoffs. Their defense is what's carried the day. They defended like maniacs. Memphis shot 36% from floor, and that was after a strong fourth quarter. They're 12 for 36 from three, 19 turnovers for 25 points. Magic had eight blocks, including four from Paolo Bancaro. From the jump, From the jump, the Magic decided this was their game. And maybe that was the element that was missing the last three games. That the Magic didn't dominate from the jump. They didn't play with the same fire and intensity from the jump. They let the missed shots frustrate them. Maybe that was something that was missing. But at the end of the day, Orlando, besides making shots, Orlando didn't do much different in their three losses than they did against Memphis. And again, Memphis, we'll get to Memphis here in a minute. Um, they defended hard. They got steals. They got turnovers. They stopped. They, they, they bottled up the offense. The only difference tonight really was the Magic made shots. And that's what turned this into a complete joke. Sorry, Memphis. And that's the process. As much as you hate the cliche, as much as you hate... The coachism of it, process over results. You do the right thing, more often than not, you're going to get the correct result. And that's what the Magic showed. That's what the Magic did Saturday night. They didn't care who they were facing. They didn't care the level of their opponent. They got their work done. And at the end of the day, it turned into a true get-right game. We'll talk about the get-right factor of it, how the Magic kind of found themselves again, and why, yes, we, we can't read so much into this game. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. 
But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at Price Picks. Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. All you have to do is just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. March may be coming to an end, but the biggest moments in college basketball tip off the month of April. Be a part of the action on prize picks for both men's and women's college basketball. You can get in, you can even get in on playoff action and win up to a hundred times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take to the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. Really, prize picks is so simple. All you do is take a player like Paolo Bancaro, and the projection may be 23 and a half points, the scoring average for the for the year. If you think he will score more, you simply say more. If you think he scores less, he says less. It's really, really that simple. Prize Picks is the daily fantasy game that I play whenever I get the opportunity to do so. Unfortunately, they're no longer available here in Florida. Um, hopefully, they will be again soon because Prize Picks is the easiest, is frankly for me, the, the best way to play daily fantasy. There's no confusing salary cap, no confusing point system. And best off, you're not playing against the Sharks in those gigantic player pools. You're playing, you're playing against you. That's really all we want, right? Go download the app today and use code Locked On NBA for a first deposit match of up to one hundred dollars. Again, download the app today. Use code Locked On NBA for for a first deposit match of up to one hundred dollars. Prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. We want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. We all spend time at home, especially here on the weekends. If you're looking for sports programming, turn off ESPN, turn off Fox Sports. You don't need to be yelled at again. Go check out the Locked On Sports Day 24 7 sports streaming channel. It's programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories about all the screen. Locked On Sports Day brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24 7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. That's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Um, I, I'm hoping it's not offensive to say this, um, but I, I, look, you, you, you see the final score there. Um, this was a get-right game. Um, you know, again, the Magic have a very good record against teams with records below 500. They they, they feast on these teams. Um, there was, frankly, even on the back-to-back, I felt very little doubt that the Magic were going to win this game, especially coming off that loss to Clippers. I thought they played well against the Clippers. And again, it came down to a few bad decisions down the stretch, you know, maybe a, a, a two, three minute stretch at the end of the third quarter when they were a little bit too lax, let the Clippers rebuild their lead. Um, their defense was just so good. I was like, okay, if they defend at that level, even without Jonathan Isaac, they're going to have a very good chance to win. Um, this was a get right game. And, and, and you looked, up and down the roster, I know the stats aren't that impressive because they didn't play their starters in the third in the fourth quarter. Um, but everyone did something that was like, okay, this is starting to look, this guy's starting to look like his normal self. Um, Paolo Ben Carroll, 13 points, nine rebounds, seven assists, four blocks, only two turnovers. He was five for 12 from the floor, one for five from three. Took him a little while to get going offensively, but we saw him hit the fadeaways and the the kind of dribble move shots that he shoots when he's really confident. You could see that confidence really growing. And look, only one for five from three. So four of his seven misses are on threes. Um, I like to see that three-point number come down a little bit. I think he settles a little bit too much for three sometimes. But look, Paolo knew, you know, no offense to um, to Gigi Jackson, who's, you know, had a really strong rookie year. Paolo looked at him as a rookie and was smacking his lips. He was ready to eat in this one. And he ate very, very well. I was uh, like, Paolo had a really nice game. Um, you know, again, this is the bigger, this is probably the bigger point of this whole episode, as well as the magic played. It is important to remember they were playing the Grizzlies. No offense, Memphis, you're 24 and 50. They're playing the Grizzlies. Um, you could tell very early on that the kind of defensive pressure that Paolo was seeing from Memphis was nowhere near the pressure he was seeing from the Clippers, from the Warriors, from the Kings, from the Pelicans. Um, he, he could take his time. And to me, like, again, this is a get-right game. Paolo, I felt the last three games especially, felt very rushed. 
felt like he was trying to speed up and, and make quicker decisions instead of making decisions on his time. This game, you could see him like taking a beat, gets the ball, looks over his shoulder, sees where the defense is coming from, um, doing, you know, kind of processing at, at his pace a little bit more. Um, Memphis just couldn't speed him up and get him to make mistakes. Um, that's something the Clippers did very well. That's something the Warriors did very well. Um, you know, Powell, I still think settled a little bit too much for jumpers. Um, but, um, but again, just, he was able to play at his pace. And I think that's really important just to kind of get that groove back, especially after how poorly he played on, on Friday. Franz Wagner also had 30, uh, had 13 points, four for nine shooting, oh, four from three. So four of his five misses were from three, five of six from the foul line. Love that he gets to the foul line, four rebounds, four assists. A really solid game from Franz. Again, I know the shooting isn't there. Um, and we're going through the box score right now, so uh, I may I may stick to that here. Um, the shooting wasn't there, but again, just he made his shots. Like he, it's like again, like this is the kind of game where the Magic could kind of get away with going through the motions. Um, again, I don't want to, I don't want to say that they did. I don't think they went through the motions at all, but. Very early on, like the Magic shot 42% in the first half. Like they didn't shoot the ball well in the first half. Their three-pointers like helped them build that lead. Um, their defense was just suffocating. You know, Memphis at 34 points at the half. It was uh, 58-34 at the half. Um, the Magic's defense was suffocating all night. That's why they won this game. They It turned into a 40-point game because they hit every shot they took. Um, but like, I- I'm saying all this to say Memphis just wasn't isn't at Orlando's level. Like, like plain and simple, Memphis is not at Orlando's level. Um, and that is, to me, the overall message here. Um, and again, like Memphis is a major step down from the teams that they face. Like, I'm not, I'm not here to offend Memphis. Love my Grizzlies peeps. Um, check out Lockdown Grizzlies. Um, Orlando, you still have to do the job against a bad team. Like, uh, again, you know, I, I I understand, I accept, I'm acknowledging the concerns that, okay, yeah, it's great that the Magic, you know, held Memphis to 88. They're Memphis. They've got 50 losses already. Do that against the Clippers. Well, they just held the Clippers to 100. Like, it, the defense is real. Um, it's just whether the Magic can score enough. And that's, that's the bigger question right now for this team is, can they score enough to make their defense matter? And, and you look, the last three games, their defense was good enough to win. Um, the defense can only give you the chance to win. Defense gave them that chance to win. Um, you know, Paul George hit a tough shot. Kawhi Leonard hit a tough shot. You live with that. Um, you know, you know, again, like I said, the, to me, the killers from Friday night were the turnovers. You don't even get a shot. I, I'd rather get a bad shot than a turnover. Um, because at least I bet you can make a bad shot. You know, you don't even get a shot. You don't even get an opportunity. Um, but having said that, like, you know, you need games like this just to give you a little confidence boost, you know, on this three game losing streak to be able to just get confirmation again that what you're doing is right. You know, again, I don't think Orlando did anything different uh, Saturday than they did Friday. The difference was their opponent was worse. You know, they, you know, I, jo- I joked on Twitter that they were playing on rookie mode. Um, you know, like I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to finish recording this. I'm going to go sit down, play 2K. I'm going to play you know, probably an easy team. Uh, and it's going to feel like that, you know, going from a really hard team to a really easy team. Like that's what it felt like, you know, when you have, you know, you, when you just clearly have the best players on the floor, you know, Paolo Franz, probably Jalen Suggs, probably Wendell Carter, you know, Jaron Jackson Jr. is probably the only player that you can put in the top five players in this game. Like Orlando should win that game and they should win it comfortably. Uh, and, you know, Orlando, again, I, I know that, Everyone is, and we talked about this earlier in the week, everyone is concerned that the Magic haven't beaten a good team in a while. Like they beat the Pelicans, um, but you know, they lost, they've lost five of their last six against playoff level teams. Like that's that is mildly concerning. I'm not gonna sit here and dismiss that concern. Having said that, close games in the last three. So I'm not, you know, I can live with a close loss. Close losses don't eat at me. Like close losses are okay, you made one or two mistakes here and there. That's not something deeply embedded, deep, deeply problematic. Like we know shooting is a problem. Like, like there, there are deep problems in that. There are patterns in that, but it means you're not far. Um, if you're consistently losing close games, it means you got things to work on. You need experience on some things like that's fine. They're not getting blown out. Like that's that, if you're getting blown out, that means you have deeper issues. That means, okay, you're not even competitive with these teams. The magic are competitive with these teams. Um, 
Memphis is not one of those teams. Like you still got to take care of your business. You still got to dominate these teams. And you know, it, all the wins count the same, like a win over Memphis counts the same as, you know, counts the same on the standings as a win over the Clippers. Um, it doesn't maybe spiritually or, or, or I don't know what the right word spiritually is not right. The word it, it doesn't narratively. Um, but Orlando just needed a game where they saw the ball go through the basket. They got confirmation that their defense is really good. Um, and they were just able to have fun again. Like that was, that, that was a big message that was kind of hammered home in the post game. You know, Wendell Carter said, you know, we kind of lost our swag this week. Um, and look, say what you want about this team. I had some people come at me about Joe Ingles on, on Friday. Um, this team is going to show you up. They're going to prance. They're going to dance around a little bit. Um, they're young. They need to have fun. And, and look, the playoffs are serious business, you know. But if any, if any, anyone, any franchise knows that you should have fun in the playoffs, it's the magic with Dwight Howard. Like, they, and Sports Illustrated asked, can Dwight Howard get serious for a minute? And I remember seeing that headline and thinking, you know what? Th- that's who he is. I want him to be who he is. Yes, this is serious stuff. Yes, you need to get your work in. You need to earn the right to prance and dance around. But I'm not going to change who you are. Just because these games are more serious doesn't mean you change who you are. This is who this team is. They are a fun-loving bunch. They are a team that's going to dance around and be excited and wave to the crowd. You know, Jalen's going to do that. Joe's going to talk. You know, Paolo, you know, tapped a defender on the butt after to, to say good defense after he hit a shot over him. Um, that's who this team is. And I think sometimes you can feel the pressure of the moment and lose sight of that. And so to have a night that's just a joyous night, to have a night that's just celebrating who you are, to me, to me, that is the success. To me, that's what the Magic needed more than anything else. They needed to feel this way again. Because, look, those three losses were disheartening. Those three losses were frustrating. You know, they those three losses did make us ask a lot of questions. And we'll answer it. Uh, we'll answer it Wednesday night in New Orleans. We'll answer it a little bit Sunday against Chicago. We'll answer it in Houston. We'll answer it in Milwaukee. Um, there are tough games still ahead on the schedule. The schedule's very tough to finish the season now. Once we get past Portland on Monday, five of seven on the road. Um, all, all but six, six of those seven against teams in postseason contention. It's not going to be easy down the stretch here. Um, the Magic are still have the inside track. It's still very likely they're going to be at least the sixth seed. I still think they're going to finish fifth. Um, but they needed a moment to feel this joy again and learn how to inject this joy into everything they do. This was a get right game. I get, I know they're playing an easy opponent, it makes it easier to do that. But sometimes that's just what the doctor orders. We'll see how they do it again Monday against Portland. We're going to go through the rest of the box score. We're going to get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word for our friends over at Amazon Fire TV. Look, Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you could plug into your existing TV and provide that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences too. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, from March Madness to the NBA to MLB and more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos too. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. All 
Okay, let's go through the final box scores. The Orlando Magic defeat the Memphis Grizzlies 118 to 88. Again, this game was complete domination. Orlando led by as much as 43 in the game. The game was tied 9 to 9. And then Orlando went on a 20, uh, uh, sorry, a 30 to 4 run. I got the math wrong on that earlier tonight. On a 30 to 4 run that 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 took over the game. They are 32 to 4 run, I believe. Um, they went on they, they went on a 21 to 4 run in the third quarter that took the lead from 23 out to about 40. Um, this was just a rollicking good time. Everyone was having fun. The match were getting tons of open shots. The ball was moving. At, you know, 28 assists on 38 field goals is fantastic. Um, 22 for 44 from beyond the arc. You don't see that a lot. It's actually the second game this season that the Magic uh, made more than 23s. The other one was the 25 they made against the Sacramento Kings in the double overtime game. Um, 20 for 23 from the line. You know, again, the Magic didn't shoot the ball particularly well early in the game, but they were getting to the line and they made nine threes in the first half. So uh, Orlando, Orlando got what they wanted. And it was just a matter of whether the shots were going to go in. And that's, again, that's kind of been the story all season. Um you know, it's a rare game where the Magic lost the paint 36-26. Um, they shoot just 13 for 28 in the paint. So the Magic, you know, if there's one area where I say the Magic have to improve, they have to get to the paint. But so many of their threes were kick-out threes. So many of the threes were coming from paint touches. That's that's really not a huge concern. And in any ways, holding Memphis to 36 points in the paint, they were 18 for 46, 18 for 46 on, on shots in the paint. Holding them to that few points in the paint. That's that's magic basketball. That is just killer defense. Again, so you know, I don't care who the opponent is, um, and and yes, I, this is not a strong opponent. The Grizzlies just do not have the guys that can attack the defenders. The Magic have the defense. The Magic have. If Jaron Jackson Jr. is not having a big game, um, if Luke Kennard isn't draining a bunch of threes, they you know they don't have enough if they can't get downhill and get to the basket and get easy baskets. And Orlando just took that completely away. Um, this this is a credit to the Magic's defense, which has been playing well for the last two weeks. This was a dominant defensive performance. And, you know, the opponents will get tougher, uh, so they're not going to play quite like this. But if the Magic play defense with the intensity that they play defense with the last two nights, they're going to be fine. They're going to win a lot of games. So... Again, get right game. Um, not a lot to be concerned with. This was pure domination from Magic. Like I said, you know, Paolo and Franz didn't have to score a lot of points. This game really became about Wendell Carter. And we're going to talk more about Wendell Carter tomorrow on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Magic. Um, so stay tuned for that. 15 points, 13 rebounds, 12 defensive rebounds. Just dominated the paint. It was only four for 10, three for seven from three. So he's take, still taking a lot of threes. Um, but the Magic did make it a point to get him the ball more. Um, he spoke about it after the game. The team wanted to get him going. They were kind of staying in his ear, trying to keep him confident because he knows he's been struggling a lot offensively. But I love, you know, we'll talk about this more tomorrow. But Wendell Carter said after the game, you know, I know I'm struggling offensively, so I made it a mission to be good defensively in this game, to dominate the glass. Well, here's your stat of the night then. Jaron Jackson Jr., just four points, one for nine shooting. Four rebounds, uh, three fouls, three turnovers. Um, that is a credit to Wendell Carter. Um, and, and I'm going to talk more about this tomorrow. Wendell Carter is this team's Rorschach test. Everyone sees what they want to see in him. Uh, I know I've said my concerns about him long term, but I still love him short term. I know a lot of people are just kind of done with him and, and want, you know, think that the center position is a big, big need uh, this offseason. Um, Wendell Carter was really good in this game. Like, uh, you may hate the shooting numbers, and the shooting numbers do need to come around. He was really strong and really solid in this game. So, I, I, I you know, the Magic made it a point to ke get him involved, keep him involved. You know, he missed three threes early in the game, but he played really well by my estimation and, you know, was a big factor in the team's defense overall. Um, Jalen Suggs had 15 points as well, four for five shooting, three for four from three, four for four from the foul line, four assists for him. He had two blocks, two steals. Um, three turnovers, you know, someone had to be lazy with the ball in this game. But um, uh, again, Suggs was great finding his three-pointers. Um, you know, just attack the basket when you attack the basket. Um, you know, then just did Jalen Suggs things again. Just like, this game was easy. Like, uh, you know, it's not easy. It's never easy. But every a lot of things came easy in this game. You know, the Magic got 15, for, uh, got 11 from Joe Ingles, three for four shooting from three. 
They got 15 from Cole Anthony on five for 11 shooting. He made five three-pointers and he was five for eight from three. Um, 12 points from Markel Fultz. He made two three-pointers. He was two for three from beyond the arc, five for 13 overall. Um, you know, again, just Orlando got what they wanted. And because they were defending so well, they could make some mistakes. They could, you know, they could be a little loose offensively, but they weren't. Once the third quarter came along, they were locked in. And they've done this a lot with these kinds of teams, you know, with Toronto, with Charlotte. That start of third quarter, they just blow the doors open. You know, they come out focused. They know exactly what they need to do and they execute it. Um, if they can somehow translate that to games like the New Orleans, like New Orleans, like uh, Houston, like Milwaukee coming down the road, like Philadelphia when they get to Philadelphia down the road. Um, if they can translate that, especially when they're on the road, um, they're going to be fine. Like they're going to, they're going to do well. Like I'm, I, I'm like, I'm not concerned. Um, you know, again, this was a proof of concept game. I don't want to read too much into this kind of a game. Memphis is not good. Um, you know, they, this is a team that you expect the magic if they execute and play with high intensity, you have a game like this. Um, and, and like I always say during summer league, it's good to know someone can do something rather than they can't. Um, if they would have come out flat, a little bit dejected, uh, and this game would have been close, I would have been concerned. But, you know, I've sat here after really nice wins over, you know, kind of mediocre teams and been like, Magic got to be more intense. They got to bring the intensity. Like, look, I'm not going to complain when the Magic bring the intensity. I'm not going to read too deeply into it, but to play it, to play like this after the three losses that they had shows incredible maturity. It shows their seriousness about what they're doing and it shows their faith and belief in what they're doing and that it can work. Um, the process works. Like they've won, they've won 43 games already. The pro it's the best record the magic have had since Dwight Howard left. Um, the process works. The question is, can they play at this high of a level? Can they execute at a higher level when they get into playoff battles? And, and that's going to be the question they have to answer here over the final two weeks of the season and into the playoffs in, in three weeks. So, um, they did the job. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, don't be upset. They did the job. They did the job. They did what they're supposed to do. There's something to be said about doing what you're supposed to do and winning these kinds of games. But the magic got right. And now we see how they evolve next and, and how they do this again. And we'd love to see them do this again on Monday against Portland. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at Philip R underscore OMD. Subscribe to the podcast. On Apple Podcasts, which you're tuning in, Himmel, Google, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the ways to podcasts to your podcast enabled listening device. You can track us out on YouTube as well at youtube.com slash at locked on magic or search for locked on magic. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out Orlando Magic Daily.com. You can find us there on Twitter at O Magic Daily. And also be sure to check out my Patreon page, your Orlando Magic Hub. You can find us there at P you can find me there at patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. And as always, thank you for your support. On our next episode, we're going to chat more about Wendell Carter and the Wendell Carter Rorschach test. We'll also talk a little bit about rotation adjustments that the Magic might need to be thinking about as they get closer to the playoffs. We'll get to that on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Magic. But now that you're done listening to us, be sure to check out the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and now available on the Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every week. Find Locked On Sports Day now available on the free Fire TV channels app. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Ross and Reich. Please, everyone who celebrates, have a very happy Easter. I think that's what you say. Um, but have a, a, a joyous holiday. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.